Hey, welcome to episode 32, I think, whatever it is. What can I show you? Jeez, it's a nice colour, isn't it? Too bad I'm going to take it all off. It looks great in the sunshine, except that it's about four different colours. Look, this is sort of a completely different blue. This is a completely different purple. Then you've got this colour that looks not too bad, but as you know, we're going to go to green. And I'm starting to think Ford Breeze was a very nice colour on the Bia Falcons but not a Porsche factory colour. Mm, either that or Wimbledon green, I think. That's where we're at. And look, I put a seat in it. So no more comical footage of me sitting on the floor driving like granny. Next up, this thing. Make a new little plate to go in there. Carbon fibre. As I'm sure you know, tyres don't last forever. And sort of seven or eight years is about the limit. And you actually don't want them sitting around on the shelf in a shop for more than about 18 months, two years. So let's just see what have we got on here. You know, I really like Continental tyres, and these are Conti Sports, which are a great tyre, unless they're 30 years old. Made in November 1994. I think that's a bit old. How about the backs? Oh, positively new. Made at the end of June 2001, so they're only like 23 years old. Nonetheless, they're all going straight in the bin. All right, so now it's time to get serious with the battery box. We've got to put in all the cross bracing to support the cooling plates, and each cooling plate supports four batteries. It's got to be super solid, because each plate's supporting about 50 kilos worth of batteries. So with this bar here on top, how much space do you want? And we'll just mark it. Yeah. Is, it, is that enough? Probably, maybe a touch. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. So if, if, you, if we just went sort of like that, mm -hmm. Do you want it inside or outside? Doesn't make any difference to me. If it's inside, then the tabs are on the different sides of the, of the crossbar. Yeah. Probably the inside's just more even across the battery, I reckon. Okay, that makes sense. These little joints here have got a bit of play in them. They're designed to expand and contact with heat, so that can actually go in and out a little bit, so it's not super critical. Just sort of put it in the middle bit there. Near enough's good enough school of engineering. We're going to have to sit to the side, I yep. guess. Turn it. So first up, Matt's just going to do a few little tack wells. Once we've fitted all the batteries and checked that it all fits properly, we'll dismantle it again, do the welds properly, and then prime it. Should work. Just making it equidistant. Yeah, it? just so that hopefully all the tabs are the same. So that's how it is, just the two batteries on top. And you notice they're slightly left of centre. And that's to compensate for my weight on the other side of the car. I could put them further over, but there's the reason they are where they are. And then 16 batteries below. And it looks like the BMS might actually go here, because as you can see, it's not over the top. Well, it might go there, but as you'll see later, it doesn't. I was actually lying in bed thinking about it and came up with a better way, so you'll see in a minute. How much pressure can that thing put on? Uh, I think it's 60 tonnes. 60 tonnes? Yeah. It's a lot. Don't put your finger in it. So Matt didn't much like my idea of just drilling through the blue steel crossbars. As he said, the bolts will crush the tube. Instead, he likes to weld on these tabs. It'll be a much stronger arrangement. He's right, of course. Taking shapes, looking solid, isn't it? Sure is. Lots of bars. Any bars. Gonna weld these on here. Oh, we've already done it. So as you know by now, every episode needs sparks. Hmm. 
I reckon that'll work. Ow. The sound you heard was me hitting something with my head. Again. Radio. So here's one of those umpteen jobs that takes quite a lot of time, but it's not really worth making a whole video about. I'm extending the loom to the battery management system. In our new battery pack, it's moved to a different spot. It needs to be extended by about a metre and a half. So I'll shroud this whole lead so it doesn't look so ugly, but you get the idea. I've got to cut all 22 wires and reconnect them, hopefully to the same leads. And that just takes a bit of time to cut, solder, heat shrink, and hopefully they'll still all work. What's important though, there are no less than four different twisted pair CAN networks talking to the BMS. Uh, and there's other leads going to the, the battery pump relay, the, the water pump, the charger, the breathing lamp that pulses when it's charging, a whole lot of other things like that. So CAN networks are very sensitive. They need to be twisted pair, apparently. So I've retained that, but nonetheless you can see it's just a lot of work. And you can only cross your fingers at the end and hope that it actually works. So what do I mean by four separate CAN buses? Why isn't it just one CAN bus for the whole car? Well, if you've ever been on a conference call with 20 or 30 people contributing all at once, you'd know smaller groups work better because you're not listening to a whole lot of stuff that's not relevant to you. So think of it as four different conference calls where everybody's still talking all at once, but the battery is listening to all of them and chiming in with its own messages when it needs to, but only sending messages that are relevant to the person or people on that particular conference call. So that's why we have four. And as far as I can figure out, this is what they are. The first one is talking to the motor controller and the captain of the ship, the VCU, about how much power they're asking for and how much it can deliver. The second one, it's talking to the charging controller about the status of the high-speed charging at public infrastructure, how much energy it can cope with, what it's trying to supply, what are the temperatures, that kind of thing. The third one is the low-speed charger like when you're charging at home, which is trying to convert 240 volts AC power to DC about how that one's coping. It might be slow speed, but it's still hot work. White with a brown, brown with a white trace to black on number two, to brown with a white trace, that guy around there. And the last one I don't really understand. I think it's some kind of safeguard. It's talking to the DC charger socket. I think about whether there's somebody plugged in or not. And for some reason, the stability control system I'm guessing that if the car's in a massive skid, so the battery can shout fuck along with everybody else. And you thought a battery was just plus and minus and that's it. You're dreaming. Okay. It looks like it might be it. I just need to wrap it all up so it looks tidy. All right, done, there it is. Look, looks a lot better, doesn't it? Can you just imagine how happy I'm gonna be if we get all these connections right, the high voltage battery box assembled, all the high voltage working, the contactor box working, the BMS, all of it moved and untried as it were, plug it all in and just imagine if it works first up. Alright, so despite the fact that we have no high voltage battery, this I think looks not too bad. Haven't got the Porsche switches in yet but camera. Gee, I didn't even know I had reparking aid assist. Okay, and I'm sitting in a proper Porsche seat and it feels great with electric adjustment. Oh, it actually starts to feel like a car now. We're making progress. Oh, far out. I did it again. Why? Why do they put those things on those caps? That's little... Can you get a grinder and just take that off? We can. Let's, let's do it. Because I've drawn blood again. You don't want to see it. <laughs> and it's smoking. Now is it going to burn me? Oh, look at that. Almost can't tell. I can bong my head with impunity now. That is just beautiful. It's like raisin toast. You know, when you put your toast in the toaster and you forget that it's raisin toast and then you grab it out by the, by the sultanas and go, ah! The worst. Yeah. Oh yeah, and when you order a ham and cheese toasty and it turns out to be a ham oh. and cheese and tomato toasty and you go, ah! Off the surface of the sun. 
surface of the sun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, that's it for today. See ya. Now, recently, I've been going down the AI rabbit hole, and oh boy, what a crazy world we're coming into. It started when I asked ChatGPT about my portion MG conversion project. And simple questions, but the answers it gave were very perceptive, in-depth, technical, really interesting, and it made some very pertinent observations. Although the MG ZS EV motor has lower horsepower, the combination of a reduced weight and instant torque means that acceleration from zero to 100 kilometers per hour could still be impressive. It understood the technology. I said, how would you go about putting the MG motor in a Porsche? And it came up with all these great stuff. But we'll come back to that. I got a little distracted when I asked AI to take these 100-year-old photos of my late parents and bring them back to life. And that was a pretty disturbing exercise. But anyway, nothing to do with 928s. Back to the story. The next thing it led to was I wanted to visualise what my 928 would look like. I said, how about, can you draw me a picture of my... Porsche in lovely turquoise on the Nürburgring. It said, no, we can do much better than that. Here's my perception of what you want. Would you like me to draw this? And it came up with a beautiful image like this. And then I said, how about, why don't you, can you make that into a movie? Now, bear in mind, there's no original photo that it started with. It's just drawn it from its understanding of what the Nürburgring and Porsches and daylight and motion actually look like from its, its memories, if you like. And it's come up with this video. It would be helpful if it had a driver. If you're going to go that fast, you really should have someone in the car. But it's showing a lot of creativity, a lot of imagination, and it's come up with this all by itself. The amount of computer processing power to do this is enormous. And yet it took about three minutes to create this from nothing. OK, so let's just go back a step and see where I started. Here's an actual photo, I think, of an AMG coming around the carousel at the Nürburgring. And I said to AI, what can you do with that? And this is what it did. It shows an incredible understanding of perspective. It's used a very wide angle lens close to the vehicle and got the whole depth of field thing and the motion happening really well. Brilliant. To do that takes a thunderous amount of computing power. Now this is a photo I did in Gran Turismo 4 of Mark Williamson's race car. That's his GT4 Aston Martin in which he won a championship by sitting on the main straight at Le Mans a track that it actually never ran at. But nonetheless, there it is, sign written and everything exactly like Mark's car. So I said to AI, can you animate this? And this is what it did. The text goes a bit blurry and the f it doesn't quite understand what the front of an Aston Martin looks like, but not bad. Look at the way it's done the lighting there. Isn't that stunning? Next one, here's me. I think around the year 2000 at Oran Park, cresting the dog leg in my first Porsche 928. Can you animate that please, AI? It took about one minute to create that video. Pretty good. So here's the brief. A Porsche 928 parked on a sunny day in a harborside setting. The colour's crystal green metallic and the car has polished five-spoke wheels. In the background, the Sydney Opera House can be seen. The whole car is visible and the retractable headlights are in the down position, flush with the body. Elon Musk is standing beside the car, admiring its beauty. AI created this. Not bad. The key thing is, it's very accurate, except that it doesn't quite understand how the headlights work. AI doesn't understand these are pop-up headlights, and it thought, why are they pointing at the sky? That can't be right. I'm going to give them a slightly forward lean. So it's actually created headlights that aren't correct, but the rest of the car's really good. And there's no Elon Musk, which is probably a good thing. So I said, try again. Once again, the headlight's not quite right, but brilliant. Now this one, it's, it's got a little confused. We suddenly got two opera houses and the crease down the car is way too pronounced. So this one, it's just totally lost the plot. We're back to one opera house, but that looks more like a Chevy Pinto in the back than a Porsche 928. And I don't like those wheels. This one, yeah, pretty good. Once again, the headlights you can see are not correct. It's just got its knickers in and not over that. This one also very good. I like the EV8 number plate. We're back to one opera house again. Uh, the 701, if it's a reflection of something, should be reversed. So that's a bit confusing, but not bad. And I did ask for black wheels, and it's done a nice job with those. This one, however, we're losing the plot again. Porsche, spelt incorrectly, which is interesting because it is often misspelled on the internet. The place where AI is getting all its information from, it's often spelled without the S. So it's followed that cue incorrectly. And it's used the wrong bridge in the background, and two opera houses as well. 
This one, yeah, also not bad. 928's never had twin exhaust pipes like that. Again, we've got one too many opera houses, but uh, yeah, I quite like that. And this one I asked for rose gold, but I got a tobacco copper color instead. Very attractive. Now I did ask for black wheels with, with a chrome outer ring and it's done a nice job, but interesting that it's given me five spoke wheels at the front and six at the rear. And those headlights again, a bit weird. This one, yeah, I said just remove the rear spoiler uh, and it's kind of gone a bit bonkers. I have no idea what's going on with that thing on the side. Again with Porsche misspelled and two opera houses. So I took a change of tack. I said, why don't you give me a video of a Porsche 928 beside the harbour? And it's created a beautiful video of a Porsche 911. I said, do it again. And it just doesn't get it. It can't do a 928 as a video. Interesting. In every other respect, it's perfect, but it's not a 928. It's a 911 and a very nice one as well. So yeah, yes, but no. And at least we've only got one opera house, but look at it. So for this one, I said, I want a 928, but take everything out of the boot and put an electric motor in there instead, driving the rear wheels. And it sort of got quite confused with that. So I want you to lift the bonnet of a 928, take out all the motor and everything and put nothing but a big battery in there because this car has been electrified. How do you imagine that would look? And it's come up with this bizarre conglomeration. I like it and I have no idea what all those things do, but very funny. Modernize the interior a little bit take out the heating and ventilation and just put a single screen there and remove the gear stick and it promptly ignored me and came up with this instead. So this particular AI might be great at turning my old still photos into videos but it still doesn't quite understand what a Porsche 928 or Elon Musk looks like. Mm -hmm.